Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and today we're talking about the Baby Lock Lyric. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do lettering and stitch combinations. Okay, to start with, when you do lettering or decorative stitches of any kind and you're using a fairly thin fabric, you need to have a stabilizer on the back. And I'll show you the difference between that. Here is a zigzag and you can see how it's kind of bubbled it up. Here is a zigzag, same exact settings, everything, but with stabilizer on the back. This happens to be a tear away stabilizer. You can also get trim away or the rinse away stabilizer. But it's a good idea to do that. Otherwise, if you're sewing on denim, you don't really need anything like that. This is a nice beefy denim. Uh, that I didn't need to use any stabilizer on. Now, one thing with lettering, this is an example of some of the lettering you can do, Baby Lock Lyric, but notice how big those letters are. This machine, if you do a zigzag, you can do a maximum width of seven millimeters. Well, seven millimeters, you can tell that that's a lot higher. So I'm gonna stitch out a uh, sample to show you how the machine compensates for that. It actually has, the feed dogs can actually move it from side to side a little bit. That's actually what's going on here when you see these stitches here or the step function. I'm not gonna really get into that in this one, but you'll see that when I'm stitching something out, it just kind of makes a little hiccup and moves from one side to the other to give you that nice wide stitch. Okay, to start out with, when you do um, lettering, this is the button that you push. Now, right now, it's in A, B. So how do we know? We don't have a stitch chart up here. How do we know what letters, lowercase, uppercase? That's where you use your quick reference guide. And in the back here, it has several um, groups of character stitches. So right here is block letters. You've got your capital letters, your... Uh, lowercase letters, and then you have European letters, and then some uh, punctuation marks there too. And over here, we have the script letters, kind of like uh, what I showed you with Lyric there. It makes some really nice script letters. And basically the same uh, letters as in the block letters, same thing with the um, frame letters that, uh, kind of like, here I have Baby Lock Lyric, okay. That's what those look like. Then over here we have your Cyrillic or Russian uh, alphabet. Down here we have Japanese. And all of these are with numbers. But how you get from one to the other, now we're going to go to script lettering. Another button push. We've got that frame lettering. Here we've got Russian. Here we've got Japanese, and if you push it again, you get back to block letters. So that's how you get into each of these. And they each have their own numbers. Uh, like number one for A is the script letter, number one for uh, your block letters looks like that, that there. So that's how you get into your letters, and you, do, you can do different combinations of letters and um, Say if you wanted to put a little star at the beginning, you could do that. Now I'm gonna show you, I've already put some into memory here. So this little button here is to get into the memory. I'm gonna push it a second time. There, I've put in baby lock. Okay, if I go okay, there it is. Now, how do I see the whole thing here? That's where we get into settings, right there. This first line here. I can use this and check the whole thing to see what it looks like and make sure that all my spelling is good. Now, if I've spelled a long word, I can check to make sure that the spelling is correct. Now, if I need to change a letter or add a letter, I need to delete it back to where I made that mistake and then type in the correct letter and then retype it in. That's how it works. So for each letter that you put in, you need to push OK. All right, so I'm going to go OK for that just to get out of that. And if I stitch it out, it would give me a little heart symbol, baby lock, and then the little heart symbol at the end. And it would just do that. The reason I know it's only going to do it one time is see that little heart up there? That means that it's only going to do it one time and not just keep repeating. To change that, if I wanted to do, say, my, um, let me get back into, uh, yes, it's okay. Get back into this. I'm going to go down to this next one that I have here. 
If I want to do that one time, there's my little heart, but I can change that right here with this. And now it's going to do a series of those, the diamond, the star, and the little dots, diamond, star, dots, and just keep doing a line of those. That's how we change it from one motif to a, a repeating motif is right there. Now, let's say I want to um, stop sewing in the middle of my lettering, say baby luck lyric, okay? And I want to stop sewing in the middle of that, change my thread, I decide I want a different color thread, but I want to start back at the beginning. That's what this button is down here. Uh, again, if I sewed part way through and said, oh, this, this is the wrong color thread for this fabric, I can start back right there. That's the back to the beginning button. Now, what about putting something into memory? You have five memory spots in this machine. I've only used two of them so far. So I'm gonna get out of that. Let me get back into this, yes, there we go. Okay, so now we're back into regular sewing. Um, it, you notice it gave the a little um, message saying, are you sure you wanna delete what you did, and that's kind of a nice thing if you accidentally push the wrong button, you can say, yes, I really did want to go back to regular sewing. So that's fine. It kept everything in the memory. It's all safe. Um, it's just that now we're back to regular sewing. It's easy to be able to do that. Okay, so let's do a little bit of lettering and programming. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to group two of the decorative stitching, and I'm gonna go, that's one of those, and I only want one of those, so I'm gonna push this right here. Then I'm gonna go down to my lettering, get my book out, and I'm gonna do A, B, C. So I'm gonna do A, zero, one, okay, there it is. Then I'm gonna go to another font, and I'm going to this one, and now I'm going to do B02, okay, and there's that one. Now I'm gonna to go to another font, the next one over, and I'm gonna do C03. Now notice here it has just a single number, but you do need to put the zero first if it's just a single digit number and then OK after each one. Now I wanna put another little heart at the end, so I'm gonna go back up here, make sure I'm in the correct group of decorative stitches, that's this one here, and then go back to zero, or one zero, which is 10, and there we go. Now for lettering, you do need to push OK for each one, and apparently for the, uh, it, it seems like, to me that for the individual stitch, decorative stitches, you just put it in and you don't have to push okay, there it is. Now, let's say I want to memorize that. Okay, so I'm gonna put this little pocket here, this, the little thing that has a pocket. So right there is where I want it. I'm gonna go okay, saving, now it's saved. Now I'm gonna go back to regular stitching. Yes, it's okay to do that. And let's pull that back out and see what it looks like. So here we go. Scroll down to where I put that in, say okay, there it is. Okay, well let's stitch that out and see what that looks like. All right, now first of all, notice that it calls for foot N. Foot N has this groove on the back which is gonna be good for any kind of uh, decorative stitching. It helps that thread to have some place to flow through. So I'm gonna start out by putting the uh, lower presser foot, okay. And what that does, it makes it so it's safer to work around the needle area when you're changing feet or changing your needle. That's kind of a, a lockout key. I'm gonna lift this up, take that off of there, put that in a safe place, lower this back down, and then, okay, we're good to go. Okay, let's stitch this out. Let's stitch it out on this here. Okay, now it's only gonna give us one of those. That's all it's gonna give us, and that's fine. I only want it to do it one time. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the um, foot control out because I know that it's gonna stop at the end. Here we go. Now watch what it does. See how it's kind of moving over? Diagonally, back and forth a little bit. When you're stitching something out, make sure that you keep your fabric parallel. 
Don't let it twist and turn. That's especially important for something you're sewing that's a little bit larger. But what this does, that stepping from side to side, again, it gives you the larger, wider motifs. There are several of your decorative stitches that also require it to move side to side a little bit to give you a nice big motif. There we go. Push cutter and there we go. We stitched that out beautifully. Now, these little joining stitches in between, you can trim those off. You don't have to have those there because the, um, there's a kind of a locking stitch at the end of each of those. Okay, so, oh, and you also have a possibility of doing sort of a turnover stitch. Let's see if I have that there. I don't have that, okay. Oh yes, here we go. So, this turnover key See if I can find that stitch. This little heart, you can take a heart, or this one here, and have it turn one way and turn the other way, depending on whether you have turned it over. I'll give you an example. Let's get out of that for now. Get back into that, that's good. And we are going to go with um, group two, 10 again. That's that heart. So I can turn this over like that. The advantage of being able to do that is, uh, let's say you're sewing a little line of cars um, or hearts or whatever, and you've got that on the edge of a little kid's coat or something like that, or the hem of a jacket or dress or whatever, and you want to have the baseline of those hearts or cars or whatever it is to be at the hem well, you don't want to have to have the body of that garment right here. You want to have it over here and just the hem right here. So you can turn it over using this turnover key, the, the mirror opposite key. It doesn't turn it this way, but it does turn it this way, which is a really handy feature to have. Plus, you can program it in so you have one motif going one way, one motif going another way. It works best if you're gonna do this to have them so they join in the middle, not so they have like a baseline join because then you have a, that jog stitch to happen. Again, experiment with your machine. Try things out. You'll be surprised and amazed at what you can do with this machine. It's a wonderful uh, machine to have. So I hope that's been helpful to get you started on your uh, adventure of doing lettering and motifs and combinations. If this video has been helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, feel free to leave those in our comment section down below. We have lots of other videos on this machine and other machines and techniques on our YouTube channel here. Thanks for watching. Bye.